Hey guys, how's it going? How's it going? How you doing? Happy homebrew Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever the heck day it is for you when you watch this video. Doesn't matter. I got a few things I want to cover in this video. Uh, the first thing is the title of the video, A Man's Purse. Yeah, yeah. I got. I, you know what? Normally women carry purses, but I've decided that it's, you know, there's not enough room in our pockets or our wallets for everything we need. So I bought a purse and I filled it with stuff and I'm going to show you that at the end of the video. It's a little heavier than a woman's purse, but hey, that's okay. Uh, it's not brew related, but there you have it. Uh, we have, we're going to be double fisted today. Two things we're going to try. One of them is the homebrew and you can see behind me, I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of cleaning up around here. I've got lots of crap going on and stuff I have to throw out and, you know, organize. So excuse that. And my fermenters, of course, are in need of cleaning as well, which I'll be doing later. Um, the beer that was made with the existing uh, East Bed. You, if you haven't watched the other videos about that last week and the week before, then you won't know what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to try to recap it. I basically um, bottled or kegged a particular beer and then used the yeast at the bottom of the fermenter to make a new beer and just put it right on top and there you have it. That beer is in the keg. It's It's been refrigerated and carbonated. I don't have a clue what it tastes like. Um, and I don't even know if it's properly carbonated because my um, CO2 tank is getting a little low so I'm not getting the same pressure, uh, and so I've got to go to Prax Air and get some more CO2 this week or next week. So, but we'll see what happens. The next, the second thing, is that I found that when I was cleaning up my workbench, and you'll see something's missing over here. Um, I found a Pat Max, and it's a little hazy because I chilled it. Damn it, it was clear as a bell before I put it in the freezer and chilled it up. This is a hard apple cider that I brewed a few, probably what, a month ago or something like that on here with the Pat Max brewing cap and I forgot about it. It was just in the midst of everything here. So it's hard as a rock and it's carbonated, I'm sure. So we're gonna try that as well, okay? So first things first, what should we do first? Hmm. Well, let's go get the beer, the one that was kegged on top of the, or brewed on top of the existing yeast bed, and see how that works. So we'll get that right now. Hang on a second. Pause you guys, and we'll be right back. Okay, so probably a little issue with carbonation. Um, I just carved it tonight. That is it, and it's not very clear. Um, but let's this the whole purpose of this was can you brew a new batch of beer on top of an old yeast cake without doing anything all right and I have not tasted this so it might be a little bit flat but let's give it a whirl can you do it let's find out It worked for me. There's absolutely no problem with this beer. None. Is it the best beer in the world? No. It's a Cooper's IPA. You know, I just threw it together. I did, you know, five and seven and all that kind of thing. Threw it on top of the existing yeast bed. The yeast bed was from uh, a Brewer's Best. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, summer ale and there was some orange peel and other things in there thrown in too so they were floating around I got rid of most of them 
There was also a few um, hop additions there. So the beer has picked up a little bit of that flavor. And so it's actually better than it was if you just did it like from the kit with, you know, normal, the way you would normally do it. It's actually quite good. Yeah, the carbonation is low. I This weekend, got to get a new CO2 tank. Um, but that is, to be quite honest with you, and, and I'm just giving you a short review, delicious. Right? So you got people in there saying, oh, you can't do it because it's an, oh, you're over-pitching your yeast and everything. Well, maybe that depends on the style of beer. There's lots of things involved. You can't blanket make a blanket statement that you just can't do it. You can. I would not tell you that this didn't work or that it did work if it didn't. Because why would I do that? Why would I tell you to do something that when you do it, it's going to turn out like crap and you're going to say, well, Craig, you know, told us to do it and it didn't work, so he's an idiot. I'm being completely honest with you. This is an excellent beer. For what it is, it's, it's turned out perfect. It's actually quite, quite good. <laughs> it's very good. So yes, you can. Next. This baby has been sitting around and it was clear, but I chilled it. And of course, that, that always causes problems with clarity. But the Pac Max brewing, brewing cap is still on it. It's hard as a rock. It's a hard apple cider that we... sounds like a bus that we made a few weeks ago or maybe a month or so ago so let's see what we've got cheers double fisted this week oh look at that look <laughs> it's like champagne can you guys see the bubbles on that It's so sparkling, a sparkling hard apple cider made with apple juice a few weeks ago. I'll put a link down in the description to the video where we actually made this actual brew. Let's give it a whirl. Cheers. As messy and cluttered and, you know, as my space down here is right now, you can still make good stuff. And that is really nice. It's carbonated. It's sparkling. It's a bit sweeter than I'd like it to be. But you can fix that. I mean, you can use the caps and you could get... Oh, that over here is you have to use whatever yeast works for you, but this is really, really nice. You can get loaded off this stuff. Apple juice. There you go. Who knew? Okay. Let's set those aside. And basically, um, I was out today. And by the way, this, this workbench is... Um, I know it looks... If you can see, you know, the that over there we it's worn out and stuff like that this used to be a door a door um, when we moved in here the neighbors uh, who lived beside us um, they well let's just they got evicted basically um, and uh, one of the things that um, happened was that uh, they had to take this door out of the house and put it in the garbage because he kicked in the hut. There was a woman and a man lived there and he kicked in the door. So you can imagine why they got evicted. You know, there was bullshit going on. So he kicked in the door and the hole, I, I went out there and I saw the door in, in the garbage, you know, getting ready to be taken. And I, the first thing that came to my mind was, ding, workbench beautiful right so the hole 
that he kicked in is on the bottom. Right, right there, I can feel it. Put his foot right through the one, you know, the, the one side of the door, but it didn't come through. So I took this damn door, I brought it home, and my dad helped me build a frame for it to stand it up and make it a workbench. That's very, it's a little wobbly. There's a brace missing on that side because we never finished it. One of the things that my dad and I are famous for is we never finish what we start. But um, but it's that's what this workbench is. And, and the reason why it's like that is because the paint's wearing off. I mean, it's, you know, it's been through a lot. But it's clean, and I sweep it with my dust pan and everything like that. And that's what this is. Plus, I got these yellow carpet, carpety, matty things that I put on it, which stick to it, but I clean them. I, you know, anyway, that's what this is. Plus, everything else you see around here is lots of, you know, stuff that I have to be cleaning up. And anyways, don't worry about that. The last part of this video is the purse. My, I got a, a beautiful purse, a man purse. The women can have their lipstick and their mirrors and eyeliners and whatever else they put in there. I got one that's gonna... I don't even want to bring it up here until I get another sip of my beer. This is good beer. Double fisted, right? Cheers. Mm. Okay. All right. Here's my purse. Ah, there you go. Oh. Ah. You know, for the last 30 years, um, probably started when I was about 20, 25, no, 20, probably not even younger than that, probably 20, maybe even 19 repairing VCRs. I used to do that. And I had a toolbox and all the screwdrivers and wrenches and things like that. Little things that you needed to prepare these damn things. Did that for years. And then fixing computers came along. Did that for a long time too. Just privately, you know, doing it for free for people, you know, volunteering. That's all I did. You know, that was fine. And I had great tools but over the years, I haven't been doing any of that, and it's been, my tools have gotten lost, and, you know. So, today, we lost a good friend. Um, our Ford Escort wagon, 1998 Ford Escort wagon, has been towed away, um, and it, they'll probably strip it for parts and scrap it. So, that car got us through a lot of great camping trips and a lot of great stuff took my wife back and forth to work um, every day and it's gone. So we've got the uh, Toyota 4Runner now. It's happening for us. It's good stuff. So they gave us 150 bucks for the, you know, the Ford. And with that, I went out and I bought myself some stuff. Ouch. I knew I didn't want that in there. Anyway, so this is awesome. Got all my screwdrivers here. I uh, got my my voltmeter and the probes in there. Ah, this is not homebrew related. Yes, it is. Cheers to man things, beer and tools. More screwdrivers, get the red handles and all that kind of different lengths, pliers, wrenches and whatnot. Got a battery tester, pliers there. There you go there. Level, my dangerous trowel. I don't know if you can see that. The thing is sharp. And inside, if I can find where the zipper is. I'm still new at this. I was very excited. I spent all night sorting this thing out. There's we got all kinds of crap going on in there. See? Now, a lot of these are my old tools. Got some vice grips. Ouch, see? I just did that again. Vice grips. Um, we got some uh, wire stripper there. Some wrenches. Got my, my rule. A little knife. 
you know, my, my dad's old utility knife that he's had. This basically built my parents' house, and my mom still lives there. So that goes back in there like that. And we got little things in there, all kinds of, my hammer's there, everything's in there. So that is my new toolbox. The other blue one that went out is gone. All right, there you have it. You can tell I had a few beers while I was putting that together. Double fisted, a little bit tipsy. All right, <laughs> and a great shirt that TG T-shirts designed and made for me um, that if you want to have one, you can. Um, and uh, they're limited edition, probably. I don't know what we're going to do yet. we got some new designs coming up, as I mentioned before. Um, and uh, so stay tuned to tgtshirts.com. And that's the way that is. 17brewcrew.com as well. Please go in there. This is a great place. I asked a question in there recently, and I got answers all over the place. I mean, it was just a great place to be. And you're not going to have assholes making fun of you or, you know, doing things. I'm not going to name names, but some of the bigger forums, they had a little click going on in there, and they just, you know, sometimes you, you ask a question and you get ridiculed or whatever. So that's not good. That don't happen in 17brewcrew.com. That's what we're all about. That's, that's a, because if that happened, I wouldn't be there. I would be out of there as fast as I could, you know, run, which isn't that fast these days, but I'd still be out of there. So that's the end of this broadcast for this week. Double fisted. How do you do that? No, that's wrong. There you go. <laughs> 17. Cheers. I need a screwdriver. Boom.